There we go. Now I'm actually on the game. Double defense. Farthest wave is 39. I have not had the best track record for this. Now, last couple runs I did just saw blades. I like saw blades a lot. I think they work really well. Uh, and they've definitely kind of shown their worth as far as like runs go. Oh, I should have checked to see if there are any changes as far as science goes. Uh, let's just go mana bolts. Mana bolts across the board seems to be just an incredible purchase, no matter what. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait on a lot of these things. We might want to grab the mana siphon. But I think I'm gonna hold out for the bank. Oh, wait, no, no, no. We don't want to hold out for the bank. I don't need too much more than this. Oh, dang it. I was really hoping we could get both of these to go straight together for a while. But alas. Okay. Quality over quantity. Do I go for the... Crit chance immediately? Sure. Oh, please. Please stay parallel. Wouldn't it not be incredible if we had like a double spiral that just goes around the entire base? Oh, I'd be the happiest camper. Okay, there's the mana bank, which is good. At this point, though, kind of unnecessary. Let's just keep investing harder into... Uh, into ballistas just to get them down. Uh, let's see. How you doing, Wander? Good. I didn't sleep very well last night. I woke up and it was immediately just, like, trying to... I... I don't know if this is embarrassing to admit or not, but, uh, I was, I was literally trying to, like, organize in my head how to do the, uh, saw blade run from yesterday and how to get it to work. And I was just lying in bed this morning, overheating a little bit because I'm a warm dude, uh, just being like, okay... How could I have done that better? And I think I have some better ideas, especially because I think I, what I need to do is learn how to beat this. Um, it's banditry next level. I think I need to learn how to beat this with... Wow, this RNG is actually incredibly good. Uh, uh, I need to learn how to beat this purely with ballistas. I think once I can figure that out, then this game becomes cakewalk across the board. I should probably also do most of my challenge runs on single lane as opposed to double. But still, Wander found you during uh, during your streaming of Dark Cloud. Been lurking ever since. Yeah, I gotta go back to that. It was a fun game. I've just been busy. Let's just keep going for the Frost Bolts. It hasn't split yet. I, boy, if RNG has decided to bless me, I'm going to be the happiest camper here. Look at this. Of course, I'm probably going to jinx it, jinx it, but still. Uh, nice part is this one's a little longer, so uh, we don't have to worry about them kind of coming in simultaneously, which is something I, I think I want to specifically work towards. Yeah, it took a little bit of damage. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Look at tower fortification. I guess I'll grab the mana bank because I don't think I want any of these yet. I also have some money. Expand this one further. Ah, it's fine. Let's see, is this the game music of Pretzel? This is the game's music. I should probably have almost all of these just focus on fastest. And these have to be on progress, but that's okay. The reason why I want fastest is generally that spreads the damage out a little bit better. And once we have other towers on board, it'll keep them slow. I think he died. Okay. Next level of mana bolts for even more damage? Sure. Why not? I've... Imb wow. How many houses am I going to get here? Let's see. Are those? Yeah. Those are hooked up. I wonder if my other problem is running out of juice. But I don't think I'm going to run out at this point. There we go. Now, what's your record for triple lane? Somewhere in the 30s. I haven't actually uh, pushed for it. Ever since the update added uh, beholders, a lot of my old strategies don't work. 
And so I'm trying to, uh... I'm trying to kind of relearn the game a little bit. Okay, this is gonna hurt, possibly might kill me. No. It hurt, but it didn't kill me. And let's grab Longbow. I should probably find something better. Actually, do I want Longbow? Yeah, I want Longbow. And we'll mix some other things in. Okay. Do I have enough? No. Yeah, we need some kind of AoE here. I, I promise this is not a Ballista only run. This is just kind of how this is shaking down because I want to see where the lanes go before I make any hard decisions. I... The desire to get the uh, saw blades in here is actually incredibly high because I feel like I could really make use of saw blade launchers more so than anything else. Am I doing a challenge run? Not intentionally. It's just kind of there. Uh, let's see. Bleed them dry. Yeah, let's pick up bleed them dry. That's where people are going to be mad at me for just constantly pushing the saw blade thing, but the RNG keeps giving me other, uh, or I'm not going to say no other option, but the RNG is just like, hey, but what if you did the same thing again? It's like, ah. Also, thank you, Beldare, for the 20 month resub. 20 months, it's been so long. Yeah, and thank you for all the support. How are you doing? We gotta get these guys some status effects. The damage is good, but could be a little better. Also, this thing is a little, a little worrying. Okay. At least they do decent damage. Maybe I shouldn't have actually put a ballista up here. That helps for the moment. Okay, let me just have one more of these. We're good. I'm enjoying Monster Hunter Rise while I enjoy Rogue Tower. Oh, Monster Hunter Rise is good. I wish I'd had more time to put into it. Alas. <laughs> do I want more crit chance? Do I want to invest towards heavy shafts? Actually, uh, we need the extra armor damage, but I might want to go for the enchanted bolts for the... The shields. Eviscerate is great, but we don't actually have any bleed yet. And there's a split. It was bound to happen. Oops. There we go. At some point, I'm going to find other things to put on here. But honestly, Ballista Spam seems to actually be carrying pretty well. Okay. I think we're good. And yeah, we've got a bunch of these things, but they're getting slowed like crazy. Uh, let's see. First time catching a stream was watching the playlist for this game. Do you think the game is feature complete, balanced, and worth the price? So, uh, those are several different things to uh, unpack. So, I would say that yes, it is feature complete, and yes, it is worth the price. I don't think it's balanced, but I don't think the lack of balance is necessarily a problem. However, I do know that the developers are planning on adding more. So, well, it's technically not feature complete, uh... Like, it is and it isn't. I, I don't know how to describe it on that one, but it's, uh... It's feature complete enough that I would recommend it. Do I want to go for banditry? Yes. Yeah, that extra money is going to go a ways. There we go. Uh, let's see. Speaking of... Can't get it there. Is that all the houses? I think that's all the houses. But no, this is probably one of my favorite games to come out of this year. I know a lot of people are still kind of hooked on Vampire Survivors, and I can't blame them. But this game has absolutely stolen the show as far as I'm concerned. 
don't think I'm actually going to pull from those. Oh, we do have the mana bank anyway, so it's not a biggie. I think I'd rather have ballistas at the moment. So what do houses do? They give you extra money based on what wave it is. Wow. Okay. I thought we had enough mana generation. I was wrong. However, we are very strong, shockingly. Right, let's grab the poison bolts. Uh, grab this one. Alright, it's Oogie time. Which is mostly fine. Grab those so we don't run out of juice. And gets me some extra storage. The poison isn't the most useful thing in the world for me, but at the same time, uh, it's a good it's a good status effect regardless of how applicable it is. Okay, what level are these? Decent level. Not amazing. more. There we go. That's just kind of spreading it out. Do you prefer the mana siphons or banks? Banks are better. Mana siphons are heavily limited based on uh, placement, effectively. Then you can only have uh, so many siphons on a map. You can have an unlimited number of banks. And so if, uh, if the mana crystal spawn is bad, or uh, kind of inopportune, then it's kind of a bad investment as far as, like, Burk cards go. So I generally prefer the banks, even though they're a little bit more expensive. This is working. I'm frankly not surprised. I'm mostly just a little taken aback. I guess that's kind of the same as surprised, but I I'm a little taken aback, if only because this is really convenient. All right, we want the Shredder Towers. If there was a place for me to use gobs of them, this is really good. Do I actually want poison damage? I have to get one if I want to go for what I'm going for. Creeping cough is great. Poisoning enemies also slows them for the amount of poison. Um, let's see, poison gained and hardened blades. Might as well. I have just enough for another shredder. We'll put it here. And we're just going to let them do their thing. I kind of want to wrap this back, but I don't think it's going to let me, unfortunately. I was really hoping it would. Alright. But yeah, so we're going to have shielded enemies now, which is kind of a nuisance. But not overwhelmingly so. And I'm just going to kind of line the upper areas with saw blades. Like I said, I swear I'm not specifically trying to do this build over and over again, but the RNG, the level design, keeps giving it to me in such a satisfying manner. Okay, our mana is holding pretty well. There we go. If anything, this is actually probably the best... The best setup I've seen for a, a saw blade run. I mean, unless I want to go solo lane, which is also equally good. I don't know. I might still want to break the idea of me doing, um, you know, just a two-tower build, but at the same time, I just can't think of anything immediately better that I want. Ah, uh, mine. So, extra damage to shields would be good, but I think I need to go sharpen blades before I can get the rest of the upgrades on the saw blades. Let's go for the sharpened blades first. Get another shredder here. We should probably also start getting some more ballistas, just because. Damn, it's 
really hoping this would like curl back on itself. Maybe this will. I should probably start building towards it. Uh, let's see. I'm really hoping that this is the year that, uh, of the indie game like you've been saying in your videos recently. Uh, VS and RT seem to be off to a, uh, getting you off to a good start. VS? Oh! Vampire Survivors and Rogue Tower. Absolutely. I mean, I would actually say, uh, what was the year that Outer Wilds, Disco Elysium, and Hades won their awards? Was that all the same year or were those separate years? Because I would say that was the year of the, that indie gaming, like, I don't want to say started, because that's false, but that there was kind of a period of time, okay, 2018, 2019. I, pretty much after 2018, I think, is the moment where, um, I don't want to say the focus, uh, switched, but that now there's kind of this, like, core legitimacy granted specifically to, um, to indie games in a way that there wasn't before, and not only that, but I think kind of this core interest in them more so than AAA. Like, there's a couple of AAA games, um, but I don't see them getting the same level of, like, I don't want to say recognition. Ah, we gotta go for a Trail of Blood first. Um, ooh, this might be really good. Uh, like, AAA games are still getting a decent amount of recognition, and I'm sure everybody's going to buy Elden Ring this year. I, I think that's just kind of a re requirement. Um, okay, so you're gonna be... If this one just be most shield. And let's buff its stats up a bit. Because we definitely need a couple of these that are actually keyed for different... What? What am I doing? I built it the wrong way. Whatever. It's fine. That should give me some more. But so, like, Elden Ring and Horizon Zero Dawn and, like, a bunch of these AAA games are probably going to do quite well for themselves. But I feel like they're not going to be talked about in the same way that, like, Vampire Survivors or Super Auto Pets or maybe Rogue Tower and a couple other of these games that, like, really take off and just hold people. I don't necessarily want to say that, like, AAA games are inherently forgettable. Um, because I... I don't necessarily know if they are, but it feels like they've been kind of dropping in terms of, like... Do I want to say worth? It's not worth, though. It's just that, like, public perception has moved on. Or maybe it's just kind of the inherent uh, desire for security with AAA. Innovative definitely matters. I, I definitely remember a time when, like, AAA games were notably much more in innovative than, um, than they are currently. And so, like, right now, I think with most AAA games, you get very, very polished experiences. But it's very rare that you find a AAA game that feels immediately fresh. I was really excited for Deathloop. Um, it came out earlier this year. I, I thought Deathloop was going to be amazing, and it wasn't, actually. It was just kind of okay. And uh, so much of that, I think, I I would attribute to... Um, so much of that, I, I think, I would just directly attribute to the fact that it was little more than a standard looter shooter with kind of a neat gimmick, as opposed to something that was, like, immediately powerful on its own. Um, and I think some of that might have just been because they weren't confident in their ability to create a product that would be able to hold its own, um, kind of on its own merits. And I, I, I feel dismissive by saying that, but like Outer, Outer Wilds was a game. Oh shoot. I didn't even realize we had a house out here. I should probably be investing in that. Um, I'll just do ballistas. Uh, so Outer Wilds is one of those games that very much didn't try to be anything more than it was, and it was very powerful as kind of a result of it. Um, whereas, and it was memorable because it 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 owned what it wanted to be. Whereas it felt like games like Deathloop and a couple others very much want to be something else, but they're afraid to go the the whole way because in doing so they might not uh, maintain um, solvency as like a studio. 
and shut down. And so there's kind of that inherent anti-risk factor that smaller teams, I don't want to say are unaffected by. I think they are. But I think, uh, at least with a lot of studios, there's kind of that, that feeling of like, either we make the game that we want now, or we're never going to make it. Now, a large group working on a game may not be cohesive enough to make a definitive point. AAA games are often marketed marketed to as many people as possible. I uh, yeah. I one of the things that I specifically think of uh, is vile consumption is good. Poison bolts level two might be better, or heavy shafts if I want to go for the fire. I feel like the extra poison damage might be the most useful. Heavy Shafts gets us closer to armor, but let's go for Poison Bolts now. Um, I'm going to extend this as long as it goes before we hit a split. Now, let's see, I think you're onto something. Wait, who said that? Epsilon. Oh, this one. Crap. This is way too much. Were AAA games ever, uh, ever regularly innovative? I know... Uh, there have always been some games that tried to innovate, but I suspect most of those weren't the ones that we thought of as AAA until after. I think that's true. I would say Mirror's Edge and uh, Dead Space would very much qualify as games that were relatively innovative within kind of their, their own fields. And I think Dead Space is probably the most poignant among that. And I, I think actually both are good examples because both were very in, innovative at the time. You know, it's like, holy shit, these games are amazing. And they actually very much carried the genre um, for quite some time. Uh, but the problem was with Dead Space specifically, with Mirror's Edge, I think it just didn't sell well enough to get greenlit for more. And for Dead Space... Where's the other one that I put? This one. Uh, what do we want to do? Longbow? Longbow. Uh, for Dead Space specifically, it was mega popular within the small niche that it kind of had created. And the problem was, EA saw that and said, how can we make bring this to a wider audience? And I think that's actually a really good thing to some degree because it's like, you know, if you stumble upon something good, it's it's important to make it generally as accept, uh, accessible as possible. But at the same time, there's also a value in sticking to your guns. So uh, an easy example would be like the Dark Souls games, which are, are almost perfect examples of how to stick to your guns conceptually and functionally while also still experimenting and doing interesting things. Um, whereas Dead Space 2, I would actually say is better than Dead Space 1. Didn't quite have the claustrophobia, but it's still refined it and made it a little bit more accessible in a satisfying way. But then, by the time you get to 3, they're like, no, this needs to be more mass market. And they cut out all of the stuff that made it, like, good and original and then started pushing for something that was more mass market. And so one of the things that you might notice with a lot of games nowadays is that big open world time wasters are king. And have been king for a while. Ah, uh, do I go for the broadhead bolts? No. Yeah. Yeah, we, we want the extra status effects. It kind of turns. I'll see what I can do. Uh, let's see. How are you placing down the same tower multiple times? Hold shift. It'll get you where you want to go. This is silly. I'm just going to leave a, a number of these with kind of their own priorities. My entire point here is just to kind of... I don't know, actually. I, I still think fastest is the best priority for most ballistas. Just because it keeps everything on average at its slowest. And it generally focuses on the, the sprinters that are the scariest for my defense. And just kind of chips everybody down so they can get finished off as we go. There we go. Building the hallway of death. It's really effective. 
I could have actually probably skipped the saw blades, but they're kind of nice all the same. Uh, let's see. Including the new Pokemon game, which is honestly better in some ways, but not others. I... oh, Expunge, actually. Sure. Alright, let's keep bringing this back a little bit. I wasn't exactly expecting Expunge to pop up. There we go. Uh, what was I going to say? But so, I, I think for so many game developers, there that desire to survive very much, survive and make as much money as possible, overrides a lot of creative, uh, creative liberties and creative specific passion. Uh, I, I think this got brought up recently when we were talking about another topic that, um, what was it? Obligate, a duty is the death of passion or something to that degree. And I mean, especially as you get to be bigger and bigger studios, there very much is that kind of, that obligation to continue to produce whatever it is that you're producing. want to have like this one be high health damage same thing with this one reason being if anything gets by we kind of want it to rip through dark souls 2 is the best entry for the soul series i i i actually uh firmly uh i want expunge too but let's go for jagged head heads we need a little bit more bleed and this is now big uh zombie oogie so we want to Kind of put him off for a little bit. Let's see. No, I, I absolutely would maintain that... Uh, let's give this thing shield damage. Just kind of let it do let it do whatever. Kind of rip through th through some stuff. Uh, but, 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 but yeah, Dark, so Dark Souls 2 is by, far, by and far my favorite. Which is odd, but... It was incredibly fun I liked like I think Dark Souls 1 had a better like mood and ambiance and togetherness but Dark Souls 2 was fun I think that's kind of one thing that Dark Souls 2 just didn't have enough flexibility to be like full fun and then Dark Souls 3 was a little bit too focused on challenge to remain full fun how dare you have fun exactly how dare I have fun you, you must get good not have fun Let's see. So honestly, like, I don't want to besmirch most modern AAA. I think there very much is a market for it. But that I, I think uh, with the way the market is current, currently oriented, there is just going to be too much of this focus on um, playing it safe. And that's often... Wow, yeah, those, those expunge crits are actually just shredding this guy. We're good. Um... The need to play it safe is often going to just kind of come at the detriment of what could be. And I don't actually know if that's a bad thing. At least not in a way that I'm going to complain about it. Uh, let's see. File consumption 2. Damage to shields. The sanguinate. There we go. And damage to armor. Because I don't want to pick up another tower, because I think I'm weirdly committed to this challenge again for reasons. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to put a shredder on top of this, just because that positioning is way too damn good. And it can hit both of these. So I wonder if you played Tsushima. When it comes to modern AAA games, I think it's the best. Uh, Tsushima is kind of an interesting case, because ultimately it feels more like uh, taking a lot of the things that make modern AAA games and distilling it into the best... Uh, its best iteration as opposed to like really doing anything new so would I call it innovative? no I, I, I don't think there's a whole lot of immediate innovation with it but I do think that the execution carried it very well but also I was bored at the end of act one uh, there was just kind of too much stuff in the world but none of it interesting like the side quests were good but, you know, running around, finding all the fox things, all the little, like, platforming challenges, and all the little goodies to find. Uh, that... I have this problem with a lot of open world games where 
the moment they put you in an open, uh, the open world, it's like, oh man, this is so fun, I can't wait to run around and grab everything, and you get really into it, and then you kind of get committed, but like in a bad way. Um, and then I honestly want to say, like, it's, it's too late, so I'm actually suffering that a little bit, uh... Another one of these, yeah, because this sucker can hit this this lane, this lane, and this lane. Uh, this is why I wanted to bring some of my other things around if I could. Oh, we should probably keep an eye out for universities if we could. But uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so uh, I'm having this problem with the the current Pokemon game where it's like, oh, it's open world, and I'm like, sweet, I can't wait to explore this world. And you spend like the first four hours just in the Obsidian Field lands, just exploring catching everything, being like, oh yeah, that's where you get the Eevee, that's where you get the, the Chimchar, that's where you get the, um, you know, this is how to specifically, you know, peg the, okay, maybe not use that word, this is how you can, um, you know, hit the Snorlax from behind from this angle so that they'll never spot you and you can catch, like, an unlimited train of level 45 uh, Snorlaxes with just Pokeballs, because why not? And I think there's something incredibly powerful about that in a way that makes it very, very compelling. Um, let's see. Who's left? Oh, it's just like one dude here. I did pass up at a university a long time ago. Let's see. What is, what's the crit rate on these things? Oh, that, that one's a low level. Sorcery. Honestly, I kind of wish Sorcery was just kind of removed from the pool. It's not really helping anybody. Uh, but so, I spent the first fir uh, first couple hours of Pokemon uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus doing that. You know, just just going wild with it and just trying to soak in as much of that open world as possible. Um, and then, now I've kind of hit this, like, I don't want to say bored state, where now I'm just kind of doing it because of obligation, because it's like, oh, but all I have to do is hundo my, my, uh, uh, you know, hundo this one, uh, sorry, hundo, like, this Pokemon specific, uh, features, and if I can do that, then it'll, uh, I might want to actually prioritize one of these for, like, armor damage. Maybe. Maybe. I guess I could always get, like, another one and just put it here. We'll see. Uh, but, you know, if if I finish my Corellius thing, then I can evolve it, and there's the university, which is super necessary. Though I don't actually think we've got any spots for the university yet. But at least now I have it. Uh, but so that kind of inherent uh, sunk cost fallacy once you hit an open world game especially, or just any game with a lot of side quests or content that can be done. Uh, the Witcher 3 effect. I think somebody had repeated that to me. And it's like actually damaging my, to my enjoyment of most games where uh, there becomes this ob obligation to see it all. This is ridiculous. And I, I often lose interest in the game as soon as it's kind of like, I just want to see the end, but there's all this side stuff that is technically worth getting, and I can't not do it, and so I'd rather just not do anything. Whereas, like, this game, I could quit it mid-run, walk away, and be totally fine. I mean, obviously, I'd have a lot of people being like, when you go play more, um... More Rogue Tower, and I think that would actually be a very valid take, because, you know, it's a great game. But, this is a bit of a problem. I'll put, like, one sucker there. All Towers game, 5% crit chance. Ooh, this is why you want to just pick. I haven't even gotten the extra bleed damage on Saw Blades. I'm going to keep extending this, since it hasn't split yet. It never split. Uh, but I, I want to keep continuing this one here, because if bosses spawn out of this, that gives me a lot of time to just do horrible things to it and clear the rest of the wave so that they hit the doom wall 
Is he doing blisters only? Blisters and shredders. Though, honestly, looking at this, I probably could have just done a pure blister run and been totally fine. <laughs> the blister, uh, the shredders are kind of nice for a little bit of bonus AoE, but that's about it. Oh, we are starting to hit the missiles, though. We might need to actually invest, because I don't do fire damage yet, uh, so I think I'm going to have to invest in armor damage a little bit more. Not with this wave, but for the next one, absolutely. Here at most armor. Most of these are. Hey, there's the burn damage that I was looking for. It's not much, but it prevents them from repairing. But I think what I should do is actually probably just get a lot of these up. Because their crit chance is just kind of bad. And just upping their base damage a bunch would probably go pretty far. There we go. I always forget to manually upgrade towers. It's very worthwhile. I forgot this split here, but... Now we got a spot for universities. Of course, they're functionally worthless for the time being, but it's okay. We'll get up there. Let's see. How much do I want to invest in each of these? I'll get them each up to 3%. Seems like the best start at the moment. Not great, but still. So how do universities work? As far as I can tell, it's a uh, percent chance every round for them to roll an upgrade. That's looking a little better. Uh, so, round starts and we'll roll each of these, you know, just one die a hundred. And uh, it'll roll it three times, one for health, one for armor, one for magic. And then, you know, that across every university you have. And if it rolls, you know, one through four, one through three, or whatever, whatever the percent chance is, uh, if it rolls that correctly, then you get... Um, probably just more burn damage. I haven't upped the effects, but I think it's still most useful when we're dealing with armor armored enemies. There you go. I definitely want to get the upgrade that makes it so universities are a little bit more effective, but still. Because especially with the amount of blisses I have, any amount of passive damage that I can get across the board because becomes so much more powerful. As opposed to, like, a really tall build where you're going for, like, maybe two or three Teslas. Because what? With Teslas, you really don't need to go for universities at all. It's not that helpful. Okay, this is mostly working. I could use probably more ballistas, possibly more shredders. Kind of depends on which I want to invest towards. And the most useful thing is just to get every tower to level 10. Because it's a very crit heavy build. And getting that crit up goes such a long way. There you go. It's also, like, dirt cheap to get a lot of the early upgrades on these towers.
Okay. 15, here we go. Yeah, I'm out of juice. We're waiting for one robot. There we go. Extra shields, research bonus. Eviscerate would also be good, but I want to grab that. And bam. Hey! The reason why I want to do this is now I have a bunch of ballistas kind of back here that can um, hit the boss. When we get there. That's how much are these at now? 6% each. That might even be lowballing it. But I just want to distribute this as much as possible. There we go. Come on, one more. There we go. Okay, how's this doing? Yeah, if you notice, they're, they're melting. They're melting kind of slow. This absolutely could get overwhelmed by just sheer quantity. And it is certainly overwhelming my mana amounts. Because I think upgrading these towers does increase their mana cost. If mana use 5 per shot. Yeah, that'd do it. On the plus side, it is working. It is doing horrible things to foes. Oh, this sucker's still only level 8. I should definitely make sure all of my shredders are beefed up to Ballista Run confirmed? Ah, almost. Uh, I, think, I think I am going to do a Ballista Run, maybe today, but... Uh, It depends a little bit. Because I, I want to do my double uh, double lane and my triple lane runs and beat those proper first. Because I feel like those are kind of a pre prerequisite for me. And if I can do a challenge as part of it, sure. Minefield only run. Uh, you'd have to do minefields and ballistas, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's doable. It's a thing. Go for broadhead bolts. Fortunately, none of the universities have paid out yet. They'll either get there. Oh no, there's two. Oh, I don't have any more villages. With these focused on progress. Let me just do whatever has the most health. We're gonna be back here now. I think we do have a we have Robo Ovi after this, so I should probably stop for a bit. Okay, so this one's gonna be honestly probably a bit of both. Let's get it up to twenty on each of those. Because this guy can actually hit the beginning as well, and also kind of rip through some rockets. Uh, let's see. How we doing? Looks like we're fine here. And yeah, if those universities start paying out in a big way, then we're golden. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Not Mana Crystal, you. You're level 14. You could use some upgrades. Seven, level 15, level 6. Yeah, so I'll spare some upgrades in that general direction. <clears throat> That's okay. But yeah, I could I could very much do an encampment run if I want to. There's, uh... So, as far as I know, the developers have been testing the capability of, of specialty runs to some degree. What level are you? You could be a higher. There we go. Yeah, now that's way better. And this guy has a lot of status effects on him, which means easy crits. Okay, bleeding enemies take extra damage. Shredders do extra damage to health. Oh, we need to grab, uh, kill him with fire. Just one level in it. And... Let's just extend this. Hey. Perfect. 
Still mostly on health damage. But I, yeah, that's fine. Okay, just kind of spread these out a little bit. There we go, 6% on everything. It's not perfect, but it's keeping the missiles off. Ooh, that's a lot of enemies. Right, I was gonna level this sucker up. Probably just get each of those up to 20. Because we're having enough problems with armor and shield. I probably should just do health damage on these guys. But being able to rip through a large quantity of enemies is actually quite helpful. So University is just money suckers? A little bit, and a little bit not. Uh, if you see right here, three health damage, one armor damage, one shield damage, hey, there's Robo Oogie. Um, that's, that's the tangible effect of... Uh, that's a loud plane. That's the tangible effect of the... Um, of the university, so it's not much yet, but we still got 10 waves to go. If that can get me X amount more, I will be in a very happy position. Ooh, this is kind of convenient. Only for a bit, but it's still convenient. Easy way to do a lot of damage. So are you going for an achievement? Yeah, several actually. Are mana bolts the only thing you're using mana for? Yup. Nah, I can't get one there. I can pop one there, finally. This singular stupid long lane is so handy. Obviously, it does make this take tremendously longer, but it does make my life easier. I think we'll not do any more on this, this regard and probably just start extending this, maybe. Because <laughs> this might actually just be too long. Universities can be hit or miss. You might even get Wanderer's achievement. Yep, I've got a name. Uh, I've got an achievement named after me, which is don't get any achievement. Uh, don't don't get any universities for an entire run, which is just kind of. I don't want to say tacky, but uh, well, it was unfortunate in the time. I think I beat the run though, so it didn't really matter. I wonder if the... Oh, wait, no, probably not. I'm seeing, like, uh, for the blisters, plus 7 health damage. I don't know if it takes these into account. So there's... Don't get universities or don't get the things next to them. No, no, no. Don't... Uh, these things, these, like, occult shrines, have a 33% chance of spawning. And if... Uh, if none of them spawn for the entire run, that's how you get my achievement. It's going to be incredibly rare to get. I'm pretty sure I don't even have it, because it was uh, it, uh, it was added after I had that run. So, I don't know. It's fine. And Robo Oogie is absolute toast. Uh, let's probably just get scholarships. Some of the other ones would be nice, but scholarships is so much better. Do I get a shredder here? That seems wasteful. That's it. Only one of these? Yeah. But every tower gets 5% crit chance. That should make for some wild nonsense. Ooh. Let's just go through and make sure every single one of these is level 10 or higher. Because that base damage bonus goes so damn far. And we might start running into stinkier enemies, like the really hefty occult ones. Uh, kind of. Alright. get some more mana banks. I 
I'm actually gonna probably take a number of these and make them tougher. Than even the ones in the front. Because these are the ones that are never gonna get any EXP. But they're the ones that are going to save my bacon the most. There we go. Why aren't you placing more ballistas? Uh, because at this point I'd rather have a bunch of tall than just quantity. Uh, cause a lot of my build is predicated on putting status effects enemy on enemies and then popping it. And so to pop a uh, status effect off of an enemy, I have to do, uh, I want slow cooker, but we want expunge level two. I have to crit them. So to crit them, I need to get every tower up to honestly level 13 to ensure maximum crit. And so if I can do that... It makes my life so much easier. Because we're going to be uh, critting enemies for thousands of damage. Not because of the, the raw damage from the ballistas, but the, uh, the status effects that I've been layering onto them. So a bunch of really weak towers are not going to have that, that bonus. But a bunch of stronger ones will. And so you'll notice a lot of these things are dying much, much faster than they used to be. It's really the question of wave 40, where we're going to stack up on that one. up here. Yeah, this is kind of all rounder it. Especially the ones towards the back. These can probably be primarily health damage. Because the base damage still means with an ar armor multiplier of 10, that should be enough. Especially, hopefully, once the uh, once the universities start coming in clutch. So does 50% crit the max? Yes and no. So after that, it starts going into triple crit or quadruple crit, which is good damage, but it's not actually what I'm aiming for. Um, I want none of these. I guess it probably doesn't have that much of a tick rate here. Uh, so you can keep going past. So if you notice, uh, this now has a 1% chance to do a times three crit. I think that's on top of, you have to roll a crit before it can have the chance of getting the uh, times three crit. I could be wrong on the math on that, but I'm pretty sure that ha that's how it works. Um, and so since I'm not actually going for raw crit damage, I'm going for a sanguinate crit damage, uh, a times three crit I don't think matters. Uh, at least I don't think it has a, a functional difference on what I'm doing. Focus fire a bit. So you're on fastest. Because yeah, we're starting to get some enemies that are sneaking through. That's a bit of a problem. I'm just kind of spreading out my upgrades a little bit. There's probably a more ideal way of doing this. But I haven't been here, I haven't been doing this long enough to know the math. And it's fine. All blisters gain a 10% crit chance. The extra bleed would be nice, but we want to go more crit chance. There, that puts them all into the times three. 
Okay. Yeah, I never got the double back here. If we had gotten this to be going along this flush, this would be a whole different ballpark. Might actually be one of the most mana intensive runs I've ever done. I want to say the obelisks are worse by like a long shot. Yeah, they do tons of damage. I think the big issue is just enemy volume. Means maybe I should just get a bunch of shredders that kind of rip through groups. Maybe. Mainly just to go for that extra crit if I can. But I think we're fine. It's just that initial wave, which is probably... probably sourced from the fact that several of these are kind of the same length as each other. I'm not piecing them out enough. Unfortunately, it's a little too late for that, because we're going to be putting end caps on every single one of these. It's maybe fine. Or we're going to die on the next wave. We'll, we'll see. Do I have any other ones of these that are not a high enough level? And they, they all have the crit chance at this point. So I guess that's kind of a plus. This one does not. A hey, Sanguinate level 2. That's nice and big. We never actually got to uh, buff the damage on... Uh, or not buff the damage. We never got to buff the bleed on my shredders, which is kind of throwing me off a little bit. Uh, let's actually do probably most shield at this point. Most of the enemies back here are going to be entirely shield-based. And yeah, let's just have tons of these all over. That are just high enough level. Uh, let's see. That are just high enough level to get that crit and nothing more. Probably focus on near death. We might even want to get a, a small legion of these kind of back here that specifically go for near death. Or even most health. I don't really know. Let's just have this one on near death. Your most health. I don't even know how I'm investing towards that one. I don't think it really matters that much. Ooh. This is gonna hurt. I think I lose. Yeah. It's the Beholders, man. They just... They just are relentless. Yeah, so... As much as I'd like to do a full Ballista dual lane run... I just... I, gosh, I'm gonna have to do something completely different if I want to pull it off there. I love the confirmation, though, that... Uh, as good as my last couple runs have been of the exact same build... That I finally know that is, at least currently, not enough to cope. Maybe I should do that on a single lane, but I think it's time that I start mixing my defense up a little bit. I think you need to block a late area shredders to take out the, the eyes of the beholder spawn. The thing is, there were a number of beholders that were just getting through anyway. The big issue was, uh... Shredders did almost as much damage as the ballistas. Oh, I should have looked at the stats. Maybe they are actually quite good. 